hear them speak, the second half of the text. The Midwife Ethan came to fetch me for the coming of new life. I brew tea from sage and chamomile to calm Mistress Church and her sister who paces by the bed. 860 babes have I brought forth without a mishap, though I mourn the ones I've lost. The father sits at the green dragon, plotting with the sons of liberty. The mother moans, it's time. I send the sister for the neighbors to assist me. Hold the mother's hand, say soothing words. The babe tarries just an hour before his head appears. At last the child is come. Matthew, the mother murmurs. I spank his bottom to hear his cry. He blinks his eyes against the bright new world. A tiny patriot. What will his future be? My heart fills, my eyes spill. We women gather by the bed and offer thanks. My payment, a yard of ribbon and baby pig, does not tell the tale of why I am a midwife. The barber wig maker. In my shop, I soap and shave the heads and chins of clients. These days, only pirates wear beards. Unlike the blacksmith, my hands keep clean, except when I let blood to cure a fever or place a leech to ease a blackened eye. Last week, the judge stopped to choose his wig. I shaved his head and measured. My journeyman sorted, cleaned, and baked the last of human hair from London, the best quality to be had. Holding back on English goods is bad for business. Pay the tea tax and move on. But I'll not share my views today with that rowdy crowd. My journeyman combs hair through the hackle. I weave the strands in rows and stitch them to a cap. No goats or horse hairs for this important, sir. The wigs perfume, then sprinkled with powder. The judge returns to have his fitting. I place the wig just so. I stop. Admire. He looks a proper Englishman. The blacksmith slave. I was seized in Africa, thrown on a ship, shaken, beaten, branded. When we landed, the captain sold me to the highest bidder. My master is a blacksmith. We make axes, and irons, hinges, hooks, padlocks, pokers, latches, and nails. Thousands of nails. I fill the forge, pull the bellows, and stir the coals. The master is old. He needs my muscle. I heat the iron, lift it from the forge, my master strikes and shapes it on the anvil. Men sit in the shop and talk of tea, taxes, liberty, and freedom. Freedom for them, but not for me. I am a slave. I will always be bound. The Clockmaker I hear time passing in my shop. Tick, tock, tick, tock. Changes in the air. My pendulums click the seconds on grandfather clocks of such quality that only fine gentlemen can buy. The limner has painted the moons that rise and slide with ease as minutes march. Tick, tock, tick, tock. But some of my clocks, the wag on the walls, have just one hand. They mark the hour for ordinary folk who earned the right to know the time, as much as wealthy neighbors. No fancy case to raise the course, just the face and my well-made works. My weight cords dangle, free, as we long to be. Here's Ethan. I read the notice and hear the secret about tonight. I fetch a blanket and collect some soot. I'm ready. Changes in the air. The time has come.
The, Sli the Silversmith's Apprentice. When my father died, there was no kin to keep me. I was apprenticed to the silversmith who had no son. The master vowed to feed me, house me, teach me to read and write. He keeps his word and shows me the secrets of his trade. Till I turn 21, my labors are his due. But I feel like family. He is a patriot with skills so fine the loyalists care not. And I support his cause of public liberty. We will not pay when we've had no say. Tonight, we'll make our mark. Ethan shared the notices and spread the secret to those who need to know. We will be heard. I sweep the shop. Heat the crucible to melt the coins. Watch my master pound his hammers. Make silver smooth as silk. Someday, I'll be the one to sketch the teapot, etch the picture, turn the handle. My hours are many. My pay is nil. But I learn my craft. I do not curse my fate. I could have been a stable boy who mucks manure. To work with silver is to make shapes that shine. We shut the shop and hurry to Old South. A Son of Liberty. My apprentice and I crowd into the back of Old South Meeting House. Thousands of colonists from Boston town and nearby villages fill every seat, stand on the side, linger in the street, wait to hear the fate of the team. Tonight, our weeks of work will tell the tale. Will the governor grant permission for the tea ships to sail back to England with the cargo still on board? I think not. In Old South, candles are lit against the darkening day. Sam Adams and Joseph Warren rouse the crowd. Josiah Quincy urges caution. The dartsmith's owner hurries in at last. His face sags with sorry news. The governor will not agree. The tea must stay. The tax be paid. Nay, roars the crowd. Nay. Sam Adams stands up and pounds the gavel. This meeting can do no more to save the country. War, war, whoop sound. Boston Harbor is a teapot tonight, shouts one. Who knows how tea will mingle with salt water, cries another. To Griffin's Wharf, I shout. To the wharf, roars the crowd. Mm. More than an errand boy. At last, the secret's out. We're standing up to the crown. And I help make it happen. I run to the blacksmith's shop, streak my face with soot, wrap my blanket like a mohawk, dash to the dart mouth, and climb aboard. The rain has stopped. Lanterns light in the deck. Thunk. Splat. The warriors and I split wooden boxes, while the captain and his crew stand by. Thunk. Splat, we ax the lids, then spill the tea and heave the heavy chest. The tea leaves float. Thousands watch from the wharf. They wait on, in silence on British warships dock nearby. No sailor sounds a warning. The Patriots, we are journeymen, apprentices, merchants, who worked side by side, speaking out for our liberty. We boarded the Dartmouth, the Eleanor, the Beaver, and dumped the team. Though many loyalists disagreed, the deed is done. We clamber down from the decks and shake our shoes. What a cup of tea we made for the fishes, say a mohawk. We fall into ranks. Up through town we march, out of the range of British guns. As we near the state house, our spirits soar, our steps are brisk. We keep time to the fiffer's tune. No harm to crew or ships. 
no paying tax on tea, no bowing to the king. We said nay and held the party, a tea party. What will happen now?